Welcome to the Design and Control of Concrete Mixtures. We will be covering Chapter 4, Supplementary Cementaceous Materials. This chapter will introduce the various Supplementary Cementaceous Materials, or SCMs, available for use in concrete, and review their effects on fresh and hardened concrete. Supplementary Cementaceous Materials, also called SCMs, are materials that when used in conjunction with Portland or blended cement, contribute to the properties of concrete through hydraulic or pozzolanic activity. Supplementary cementaceous materials are shown from left to right. Fly ash, class C, metacolon, calcinide clay, silica fume, fly ash, class F, slag cement, and calci calcined shale. This table shows the applicable specifications and classes of SCMs. This table illustrates typical chemical analysis and selected properties of typical fly ash, slag cement, silica fume, calcined clay, calcined shale, and metacolon. Fly ash is a byproduct of the combustion of pulverized coal in electric powder generating stations. Fly ashes are divided into two classes in accordance with ASTM C618, Class F, and Class C. Class F fly ash has pozzolanic properties and is normally produced from burning anthr anthracite or bitum bituminous coal. Class C fly ash has both pozzolanic and hydraulic properties and is normally produced from lignite or subbituminous coal. Most fly ash particles are fine solid spheres, although some are hollow cenospheres as pictured here. Slag cement, also known as ground granulated blast furnace slag, is the glassy material formed from molten slag produced in blast furnaces as a byproduct from the production of iron used in, in steel making. There are three grades of slag cement in accordance with ASTM C989. Grade 80 is slag cement with a low activity index. Grade 100 is slag cement with a moderate activity index and grade 120 is slag cement with a high activity index. Slag cement is, ground, is a ground product with most angular particles smaller than 45 microns. Products resem product resembles white cement. Silica fume is the ultra-fine amorphous silica produced in electric arc furnaces as an industrial byproduct of the production of silicon met metals and ferrosilicon alloys. Silica fume for use as a pozzolanic material in concrete may be supplied in one of three forms in accordance with ASTM C1240 as, pro as produced in which it is, it is an ultrafine powder slurry where the powder is suspended in water and densified where the silica fume is allowed to folicate, folliculate and form a coarser powder. Silica fume is composed of very tiny spherical amorphous particles with an aver average diameter of 100 nanometers. Natural pozzolans are produced from natural mineral deposits. Some of these materials require heat tr treatment, known as calcining, to make them pozzolanic, while others, such as volcanic ash, can be used with only minimal processing. Natural pozzolans are classified by ASTM C618 as Class N pozzolans. Calcined shale, shown on the left, and calcined clay, shown on the right. Metacolon is a calcined clay that is produced by low temperature calcination of colon clay. A pozzolan will react with calcined hydroxide to form calcined silicate 
hydra hydrates. The CSH from Poslin reactions is not the same as Portland cement CSH, but does contribute to strength and helps lower the permeability of the hardened material. Slag cement is referred to as a latent hydraulic material. This means that it will hydrate when it is mixed solely with water, but the process is typically slow. Some fly ash ashes and natural poslins contain enough calcium to possess latent hydraulic properties. Latent hydraulic material materials benefit from chemical activation from calcium hydroxide and alkali, alkali hydroxides. This table provides an overview of the freshly mixed concrete properties that SCMs affect and their degree of influence. The properties will change dependent on the material composition and dosage along with other mixture parameters. Of all the SCMs, fly ash has the most beneficial effect on water demand. Concrete mixtures containing fly ash generally require 1 to 10 percent less water for a given slump than concrete containing only Portland cement. However, fly ash ashes with a high percentage of coarse particles are less efficient in reducing the water demand and in extreme cases may increase the amount of water required up to 5 percent. Generally, the use of fly ash, slag cement, and calcined clay and shale increase workability. This means that for a given slump, concrete containing these materials is generally easier to place, consolidate, and finish. Mixtures that contain higher dosages of finer materials such as silica fume can increase the stickiness of a concrete mixture. In general, the finer the supplementary cementaceous material is, the lower the bleed rate and bleed capacity. The use of SCMs will generally retard the setting time of concrete, as shown in the table here for fly ash. Supplementary cement cementing materials generally require an increase in the amount of air and training admixture necessary due to the increase in fineness of the cementaceous materials content. The majority of supplementary cementing materials typically have a lower heat of hydration than Portland cement. This table provides an overview of the hardened concrete properties that SCMs affect and their degree of influence. As with fresh concrete, the properties will change dependent on the material composition and dosage along with other mixture parameters. These general trends may not apply to all materials and therefore testing should be performed to verify the impact. The extent to which strength development of concrete is influenced by supplementary cementaceous materials will depend on many factors. This chart shows the comp compressive strength development at 1, 3, 7, 28, and 90 days of concrete mixtures containing 307 kilograms over three or uh, meters to the third of cementaceous materials with a fly ash dosage of 25 percent of the cementaceous materials. This figure shows the compressive strengths for concrete cured at 73 degrees Fahrenheit for the first 40, 24 hours and 40 degrees Fahrenheit for the remaining time. Control had a cement content of 30, 332 kilograms and the fly ash curves show s substitution for cement S, partial equal substitution for cement and sand P, and addition of fly ash by mass of cement A. The use of partial cement substitution or addition of fly ash increases strength development comparable to the cement only control, even in cold weather. With appropriate designs of the concrete mixture, control of an adequate curing, fly ash, slag cement, and natural poslins generally reduce the permeability and absorption of concrete. This figure shows the reduction of alkali silica reactivity by calcined clay and calcined shale. 
Fly ashes with CAO contents below about 20% are generally effective in reduction expansion in ASTM C1293 concrete prisms made with a reaction aggregate at 25% replacement rate. However, some fly ashes with a high alkali content are not. Without fly ash, this aggregate expanded about 0.25% at two years. This is a view of concrete slabs in PCA outdoor test plot containing A fly ash, B slag, C calcined shale, and D Portland cement after 30 years of de-icer and frost exposure. These samples demonstrate the durability of concretes containing various cementaceous materials. This shows the relationship between de-icer scalling resistance and dosage of fly ash uh, for air and train concretes made with moderate to high water cementaceous materials ratios. Replacement of Portland cement with fly ash. At the left, 25% and at the right, 50%. A scalling rate of 0 is no scalling and 5 is severe scalling. This table demonstrates that well-designed, placed, and cured concretes with and without fly ash can be e equally resistant to de-icer scalling. The ACI 318 building code states that the maximum dosage of fly ash, slag, and silica fume should be 25%, 50%, and 10% by mass of cementing materials, respectively for de-icer exposures. Total SCM content should not exceed 50% of the cementitious material. In summary, this module covered the various supplementary cementitious materials available for use in concrete and other effects on fresh and hardened concrete. If you have any questions, please write them down in your journals so that they can be discussed in our next class.